Uh, hello, welcome back to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is June 13th, and this is the EU-US edition. Around the table, we have myself, Kevin Martins, Chris Stern, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verachton joining us. As other people join in, we'll welcome them in, uh, but for now, we'll go over the agenda. So, uh, on the agenda, we've got the weekly release for this week of 2.462. Uh, what the next weekly release brings, which is Java 17 requirement, uh, upcoming LTS releases and pa or, uh, recent and upcoming LTS releases, I should say. Uh, the contributor spotlight that we just published last week for Von D. Uh, nice blog post from Damien uh, for the Mirror sponsors. Uh, some notes on the Google Summer of Code projects going on. The version docs project that's still continuing. Uh, some notes on the Jenkins switch from Je Jetty and what that means. Uh, and if there's any other topics that we want to cover or go over, if we have time, we can definitely add them on. Uh, or if anyone has any pressing matters that they want to attach to the agenda right now, we can do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll just start from the top. Uh, so first things first. So we had weekly 2.462 built and delivered this week. No problems there. Uh, thanks to Mark for taking care of the change log and getting that published. Everything looks good there. Uh, next week, we'll have Jenkins weekly release 2.463. Uh, now, this is a big one because that does uh, bring with it the requirement of using Java 17. Um, thanks to Basil Crow for writing a blog post announcing this as well. Um, some really great work here with a lot of great information uh, about what the release looks like, uh, the, migra uh, the um, ad adoption of Java 17 up to this point and what that's looking like for Jenkins as a whole. Uh, and kind of the ins and outs of what that means for just daily usage of Jenkins. So thanks to Basil for that. Uh, love it. Lots of great stuff there. Uh, and then uh, so just some notes about this and going forward, what the LTS releases are going to look like. So um, the next LTS baseline will be selected by June 26th or so. Uh, so over the next couple of weeks, that will be determined um, in the developer mailing thread. And then uh, eventually what will happen is the LTS release at the end of October will be the first one to require Java 17 as the baseline Java version. Um, so we've still got some time there. Uh, but in the meantime, June, July, August, September, they'll all continue to support Java 11. Uh, so that will, be, that will still remain in play for uh, a few months still. And then uh, again, the graph is included in Basil's blog post, but this is a, a live version of the graph that you can run to see uh, what it looks like at current date. Um, so if you're ever curious just to see what that uh, adoption rate looks like, you can check here, you can fork the repository, run this yourself and see what it might look like. Um, and that's something that we've been using for a little while now, and I'm sure we'll continue to use just to kind of track and visualize that adoption rate. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, again, starting with after next week, the Java 11 container images will not be updated accordingly. Um, with the weekly release moving to Java 17, uh, Java 11 won't be used, and the Elm Linux controller container is end of life at that point. So everything will be following suit according to what we're doing with the releases. Uh, any questions or notes to share on the Java 17 requirement and the weekly release? Uh, next up after the weekly releases, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss the LTS releases. So we just had 2.452.2 release yesterday. Thanks to everyone for their work on that. It seems to have gone smoothly. Uh, I believe Mark will be doing the uh, usual uh, live stream with Darren Pope to go over any changes. Uh, so that'll be later today. And then uh, there were a couple of backports that needed to be added into the change log. So Mark was able to get those taken care of and implemented into the change log. Again, thanks to him for all of that work. Uh, and thanks to Chris for being the release lead for uh, point two. Again, uh, everything's been going really well. And yeah, just great work from everyone. Uh, 2.452.3 is scheduled to release at, uh, towards the beginning of July on July 10th. Uh, Chris has once again uh, volunteered to be the release lead, so thank you very, very much for that. And then the release candidate is scheduled to be available on June 26th. And uh, again, the next LTS baseline decision is uh, scheduled for that around that time as well. 
So as we get towards the end of the month, we'll have a better idea of what the LTS baseline will look like and how the uh, 0.3 release for this will be shaping up. So uh, lots to look forward to there. And uh, yeah, excited to see what th those look like. Uh, next up on the agenda, so we just published uh, Vandit Singh's Contributor Spotlight. Vandit's been part of Google Summer of Code over the last couple of years, as well as being a contributor to Jenkins. So really great to see the spotlight shine on him this time around. Uh, it did get published a little bit later than usual, but uh, we did. I did partner with Alyssa to make sure that that was published and noted in uh, tweet and post. Um, we've also got a few other responses from some other GSOC contributors as well. So that's really great. We'll be publishing more as we go along. And then uh, there was a suggestion to add Darren Pope to the spotlight, which is a great idea. He, he constantly was recording videos describing Jenkins usage and tutorials. Um, a, lot of, a lot of his videos have been already put into the documentation. So having the spotlight for Darren would be a great call. I think it's a really lovely way to uh, highlight his work for the project. Uh, and then additionally, um, for the contributors page, uh, Chris has been doing some work on getting a, uh, a thank you note uh, to the bottom of the page so that there's a little uh, notice saying, hey, thanks to these contributors as well. Um, and we've been working on that, providing some feedback. So um, just something small at the page, other projects and other uh, organizations do something like this. So it's a nice, uh, nice little way that we can incorporate further appreciation into Jenkins.io uh, without having to create a whole new page or section or anything like that for it. Uh, and this pulls from GitHub data too. So uh, it's it's just getting what people are doing and presenting that to others that might not see that work. So um, a really nice little contribution there. Thank you very, very much for Chris for, uh, for organizing and putting that together. Um, and that's using data that's been collected from Jean-Marc Messin, which is really nice to have uh, as part of his legacy. So uh, overall, just a really nice little sentiment there that we can add on and give thanks. Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, Damien DePorthel also create, wrote up a blog post recently to share the status of our mirrors, thank the mirror sponsors, uh, and also uh, announce a new mirror sponsor from Postico. So uh, that mirror covers Eastern Europe and Russia. So thanks to them for supporting Jenkins in that sense. And uh, yeah, just thanks to Damien for putting this out there. Um, the mirrors don't necessarily get noticed as uh, much as sponsors in some cases. So it's always good to make sure that we're calling the mirror providers out, showing our appreciation and um, showing that the reach of Jenkins is possible further due to the mirrors. Uh, without these mirrors, it would not be as accessible in places like China, in Russia, in Japan without uh, having that access. So the mirrors are hugely important in the global reach of Jenkins. Uh, next up, the, so Google Summer of Code projects. Google, Google Summer of Code is still continuing on. It's in full swing at this point. Um, the Improve the Infra Strat site project is going on and continuing. Coding periods begun. Um, the contributors are still working on some, uh, you know, end of year things that for school and education. But um, once they're fully free from that, they'll be committing to this further, and we'll see more progress there, of course. And um, but right now, July 11th is uh, scheduled to be the midterm presentations date. So. By that point in time, we'll hopefully have had some chance to sit down and work with the contributors and uh, the mentors and have the projects get to a point where they're comfortable presenting that status. So uh, be on the lookout for more things there. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be sharing some insights and uh, findings once we get to that point as well. Uh, typically the GSOC contributors uh, submit some blog posts uh, recounting where they're what they've gone through, where they're at now. Um, so we'll, I'm sure we'll hear more from them soon enough, too. For the version docs project, so again, the result of a 2023 Google Summer of Code project to build Jenkins.io with alternative tools. Uh, this has been in progress uh, from Vandy and Chris Stern, uh, both taking on a lot of uh, work to get this done, but uh, it's been uh, created as a part of the Jenkins infrastructure so that's fantastic. Um, there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done to make sure everything's uh, 
in, able to be integrated. Uh, but Chris also had just done some work to update the contents of the version doc site with things that have been done on regular Jenkins.io. And they, uh, that's looking good to, as well. Um, there were a couple of hiccups, but uh, thanks to Damian and myself uh, checking things out, doing some review, we were able to kind of get down to what was causing a holdup on that and things have been resolved. So uh, the updates are looking good. Uh, and then um, just, yeah, again, some more work to be done before it's integrated fully with Jenkins.io, uh, but we have confirmed that the updates are visible. And so things are looking better in that regard. Um, if anyone wants to can help with review or provide any insights, um, if you find anything that you feel is an issue, raise that issue to the repository. Um, we are doing all our tracking in there, uh, just like every other Jenkins or Jenkins repository. So uh, using the issues tab is the best way to report any uh, findings that you have. Uh, and then the the last topic I have here on the agenda is regarding the Jenkins switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. Uh, and the Jenkins switch from JD12 EE8 to JD12 EE9. Um, I know that Adrian and Basil have been doing a ton of work on this, but uh, haven't been privy to a lot of that. So, uh, Mark, would you be able to speak to what this is all uh, referring to and meaning for the project? Sure. So next Tuesday, as, as you said previously, we will deliver a Jenkins weekly that requires Java 17. It will no longer run on Java 11 or earlier. So Java 17 or Java 21 are required beginning next Tuesday. Um, the next step after that on the journey, so the journey, the destination for the journey is as of August 31, 2024, Spring Security 5.x is no longer supported by the Spring, Spring project, but Spring Security 5.x is what Jenkins uses. So we need to switch to Spring Security 6. Spring Security 6, unfortunately, requires Jakarta EE9. Jakarta EE9 is a major transition. Jenkins uses Jakarta EE8 right now. And so in order to switch to Jakarta EE9 so that we can switch to Spring Security, we also have to upgrade from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. Jetty is our web container that we use to provide our HTTP processing. And so step one is upgrade from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12, running Jetty 12 in Jakarta EE8 mode. So Jetty 12 has this ability to run in either EE8 or EE9. So step one, run in EE8 mode. And what Basel and Adrian have done a bunch of prototyping and have found these three blocking issues that we need to investigate and resolve before we switch Jenkins from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. So next Tuesday, we'll switch to Java 17, but we'll still be doing Jetty 10. The next step is get to Jetty 12 EE8. And we think given the slow progress on these three blocking issues, that it'll probably be July before we make that transition. We had hoped to make it sooner, but we just haven't made the progress on these three issues. We were looking for hope from others in the community. It didn't work out. So I'm working on two of the three right now and we'll take on others as time allows. That's okay. We'll get to Jetty 12 EE8. It looks good. So just so we're clear, I'm running a prototype in my development environment of the next one, Jetty 12 EE9. And it's working quite well. I've reported two bugs. That's the total. I guess three, one of them has been fixed. So a very small number of bugs that have been detected and it's running surprisingly well for, for how massive the change is that's having to be done to do this transition. We've got to retain compatibility. We've got to allow old plugins to continue to work. Uh, we've got to update plugins to use new Java features. We've got all sorts of things that have to happen in this context, enormous amounts of work. And we've got, as an example, Bruno has created a feature in the Quick Start project, in the Quick Start Tutorials project, that lets me or anyone else use this Jakarta, e, this Jetty 12 EE9 prototype 
in a development environment. So if Kevin, from this page, if you'll look at the branches list, you just did perfectly. Spring security is the magic branch where Bruno has done his work and he makes it as easy. I check out this repository. I check out the spring security branch and then I run the commands that he lists in the readme and I get a version of Jenkins running with a very useful set of plugins ready to run any one of the chosen tutorials. And it's using this Jakarta EE9 prototype. So Jetty 12, Jakarta EE9, all, all inside the thing. And the Docker so, Compose. Which is I, right. It's, it's, it's a, it's a piece of, it's a beautiful piece of work. Thanks very much, Bruno, for doing it. And, and the idea is what I asked Basel was, do you want bug reports? And he said, absolutely. But what he needs is good bug reports, right? Saying, oh, it broke. And that's all you say is worse than not saying anything. So much better. Oh, here's this failure. You can duplicate it with these steps perform these clicks through the UI. The thing is things that are most likely to fail in this are UI interactions where someone enters data into a form, saves the form and returns to it and sees that the data was actually not saved. So it's very human centered and very much ready for human beings to do that kind of testing. So did that answer your question, Kevin? Yeah, no, that, that cleared everything up for me, Mark. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. And then um, and then I just want to make sure, so I heard correctly. So this is all part of the transition from uh, Spring Security 5.8, which is no longer going to be supported to 6, which is going to be the next supported version, if you're correct, or this correct. is... Okay. So, right. So, so right now, Jenkins is using Spring Security 5.8. And, and after August 31, the spring project is not willing to support it any longer. So we want to get off of that version, get onto the version they are supporting, Spring Security 6. Right. Okay. Great. That clears that up. And um, thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, and I know, I think we've discussed the Spring Security um, move here before. Um, if not, there are some other um, previous meetings that have discussed it, um, but it's something that we're just working towards in the meantime, as we have these other changes, Java 17, um, that spring security, the uh, things that make the spring security fix uh, change possible. Um, so there's a lot of things going on at this point, and that will be happening over the next few months as we make these transitions. So um, it'll be a busy time for everyone. So uh, any opportunities you see to help contribute in any way, code review, like Mark said, good bug reports on stuff that you find. Um, these are all things that are very invaluable and can help the project in, in any number of ways. So um, yeah, feel free to, to poke around and check, test things out and see what you can find. Um, I'm sure if you find something interesting, someone will want to hear about it. So don't be shy. Uh, and that covers the agenda that I had prepared for today. Uh, does anyone have any other topics or any other items they wanted to discuss or uh, highlight here? No? Okay. All right. So uh, it looks like we're all set for the day. Um, the meeting will be, uh, the recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours, cross post city community uh, discourse as well. Uh, and until next time, uh, take care, stay safe. Uh, thank you as always for all the work that you do. And I uh, will see you then. I know.